Before we get into the guts of the meeting, I just want to say hi to everybody. I know some of you, but not everyone. And uh, my name is Dana Soar. I'm, I'm here because I've been in Howard County for 38 years now. I bought a home with my wife in 1984 when I was just launching my career. Uh, we, we bought a, a rancher in Fulton on an acre lot uh, at a time when, you, you know, normal people could do that. It was a stretch for us, but uh, it worked out. And over 12 years, the house appreciated to the point where we were able to trade up to a larger home. And we built equity through those homes that allowed us to put three children through college. They got through their undergrad degrees with zero debt. And so the dream of home ownership for, for us was very real, and it's very difficult now and nearly impossible for many. Um, I'm in my encore career now, and about five years ago, I took a job with uh, Bridges to Housing Stability, which provides homelessness services and affordable housing in Howard County. And I had volunteered for Bridges for 10 years before that. And, you know, in that time, um, you know, I, I, I just see so many families, so many people who are struggling in our community, just struggling to hang on and uh, remain stably housed. And so that's that's the reason uh, why we're here tonight. Um, Howard County is in the process of updating uh, what is called its general plan. And you'll hear a little bit more about that uh, in a few minutes, but it's at a high level, it's the growth roadmap for our community uh, for the next 20 years. This update, uh, is called HOCO by design. And the reason the coalition called this meeting tonight is that we believe we have to act now to ensure that we get solutions to our housing crisis. And um, there's no doubt that we're in crisis in our housing market in Howard County. It's a complicated subject, but it starts with this simple formula. We continue to create jobs. We continue to build not enough housing and the result is scarcity. And when you have scarcity of any critical commodity, prices are gonna go up. The, and in the case of housing, rents are gonna go up as well. Um, every study that's done about this estimates that we've got about 20,000 homes that are missing for the demand uh, that's there today. And as a result, uh, with home prices rising, we have very few home ownership opportunities for people who are moderate or low income. We have unaffordable rents for the 30 plus thousand renter households uh, in Howard County. That's one in four households in Howard County. We know that 12,500 of them are paying unaffordable rents. About half of those are paying more than 50 cents of every gross dollar that they earn just to pay rent. And that squeezes their capacity to thrive and prosper. And those numbers are getting worse. They've gotten worse you know, uh, over the last 20 years. We're also seeing increasing segregation of neighborhoods as um, people of color um, who tend as a group to earn lower income than other groups. They, they can only find housing in certain neighborhoods that they can afford or barely afford. And so we are seeing increasing segregation and, and a loss of diversity that for many of us was a, a, an attractive element of Howard County. It's, it attracted many of us to, to the county. Um, and and if you look at who's being impacted, I mean, pick a group, seniors, essential workers, these can be, um, you know, people in our uh, teachers in our schools, uh, other public sector workers, um, uh, people with disabilities. Uh, I mentioned, uh, all, you know, one in four Howard County households is, is earning $75,000 or less. And depending on household size, that, that makes you low income. So that's one in four households and in, in the sixth most, most affluent community in the United States. All of these people uh, are, are getting squeezed. And the reason for that is because in most house, households, housing is the biggest expense in, in a household budget. So when housing gets unaffordable, the impact is widespread. It impacts a lot of different people. And I just wanna stress that this list that we're looking at here, these bullets here on this page, it's not something I invented or I guessed at or whatever. There's all kinds of data that I'm pulling this from. That's It comes from our county government uh, in multiple reports and consultant studies. It comes from community organizations like Bridges that I work for, but grassroots and community action and, and you know, the, and uh, places like DSS and, you know, our, our, our government organizations. If you, 
if you talk to anybody who touches housing in our community, really, you won't find much disagreement that we have a crisis um, in our housing market, which is destabilizing people. And yet, so we have this plan that came out, or this update of our general plan. It was released on December 1st. And if you there's 11 chapters in the plan. If you get to chapter 10, you'll see this, that the plan sets a growth target for new housing construction that's actually slower growth in new homes compared to the last 20 years. You can see the details in here, but it's a 27% reduction in annual growth. And we're gonna build fewer homes if this plan is what actually gets passed by the county council. So just recall that we're in a 20,000 home shortage, a big hole now. We're gonna to continue to grow jobs. The estimates are 60,000 jobs over the next 20 years or so. Where are these workers gonna go? They're gonna, the, the highly paid ones are gonna push out the poorly paid people and prices are just gonna keep going up and continue to stress and destabilize and choke off the, the dreams and the, the ability of, of so many people in our community to, to thrive. So this is why we're here tonight. And, and you know the reality is if that draft plan that came out on December 1st is what sails all the way through the county council and is passed sometime next year, the problems are gonna get worse. So I personally am concerned the coalition's concerned. I, I think a lot of you are concerned. I think that's that's probably why you're here tonight. So thank you again for being here. And with that, let me turn it over to Dawn. Hi, everybody. Thanks for being here. I want to introduce myself real quick. My name is Dawn Baskin. I am an intern at Bridges to Housing Stability. I'm a student at University of Maryland, Baltimore, studying social work. I uh, want to specialize in community development and community outreach. Um, we want to give everyone an opportunity to meet in small groups to discuss, uh, introduce yourself so we can start building relationships since we're all in this coalition together now, or hopefully you're thinking about joining. Um, and some, some questions that we're suggesting that you talk about is simply introducing yourself and tell us, tell each other how you're connected to Howard County, and then um, what motivates you to be here today. Uh, and why you're interested in this topic of affordable housing. Uh, just to give a little background about me, besides my education, um, I do not actually live in Anne Arundel. I mean, sorry, sorry, I'm trying to admit someone. I don't live in Howard County. I live in Anne Arundel County. About 10 years ago, my husband and I were trying to uh, move closer to his work. Um, and we tried to move to Howard County because we knew it was supposed to be a nice place to live, but we were not able to afford a house there. So that's why we ended up in Anne Arundel. Um, so I'm going to sign you into breakout rooms. They're about, so I would like to turn over the mic to Jackie Ang, who is the coordinator of our coalition. Thank you. Hi everyone. I've been a housing advocate here in Howard County for about 20 years. I've had the privilege to work with Bridges to Housing Stability, the Association of Community Services and the Full Spectrum Housing Coalition which was the forerunner to our current housing uh, coalition. The past four years, it's been my very good fortune to work with 14 committed and really smart people who serve as the coalition steering committee. Collectively, they're steeped in every aspect of housing development, planning, zoning, financing, and particularly the impact on individuals and families, families of homelessness and of um, housing instability. As you can see, the coalition has four primary mechanisms that we use to increase public and county leadership understanding that housing is an integral element of an economically sustainable community. As are jobs, education, and, um, health, and transportation. We keep our eyes on the government entities whose decision can impact housing and what other states and counties are doing across the country to help resolve their housing crises. Our outreach tools include education and partnering with other community-based organizations that share our interest in housing, relate, housing and housing related issues. And finally, we advocate through conversations, letters of support, testimony. From a, lunchtime, from a lunchtime conversation with a few concerned individuals, the coalition membership, as you can see, has grown to 
over 30 organizations and over 100 individuals, including many of you who are here tonight. And as for you, and for your support, my co my steering committee colleagues and I are um, uh, just so very grateful that you've chosen to be involved. While there have been many frustrations and many roadblocks along the way, the coalition has had some successful out has been party to some su successful outcomes, uh, thanks to our advocacy efforts. Certainly, the Housing Opportunities Master Plan and establishing the Housing Opportunities Trust Fund are among our most satisfying wins. The Robinson Overlook development for the first time in this county required set aside units that are affordable and accessible for people with disabilities. And while there's still a few legislative hurdles uh, for three of the five enterprise uh, redevelopment projects, um, the first the first project, Roslyn Rise, is well underway. They've broken ground. They had a groundbreaking ceremony. And pretty soon, I'm excited to say, pardon the pun, uh, that I'm looking forward to see Roslyn Rise rise above the ground. Um, when completed, that particular project uh, that left sub, um, geez, sorry, when, when, it, when it's all done, uh, it's going to be families are going to come back that were living in substandard living conditions in the 50 year old property. And they're going to be able to return to a new families will be added to because there's an increasing the number of affordable units an ADA accessible and amenity, amenity rich community, which they all very much do. The overriding priority of the coalition is and always has been increasing the number of affordable homes across the county. Our current fo focus, which uh, um, is the update of the general plan, which has the, um, the title of uh, HOCO by design. Uh, just as background, a general plan is a long-term vision for growth, land use, and preservation for the next 20 years. It's, update, it's been updated uh, every 10 years since 1960, and it's developed through a process that encourages community engagement and input. And that's what we're going to be asking you all to participate in, but a little bit more about that later. A general plan is a policy document. It establishes the general framework, the priorities, for how county resources can be used. The plan impacts almost every aspect of our community's lives, including what kinds of housing should be developed, transit options, such as uh, whether there should be a focus, a priority on increasing public transportation within the county or to help commuters get to jobs across the region. Even types of businesses that should be targeted for economic growth are, uh, are impacted by this plan. Plan also drives the priorities for how the county uses and protects county land. An example of how the plan uh, impacts the future character of the county is the decision in the late 50s, 1950s, to enable Jim Rouse's Columbia vision, which enabled the shift from a primarily agrarian community. It had been shifting a little bit over time, but this required a real, rad uh, enabled a real radical shift from uh, an agricultural community to one that encouraged, uh, and we're now seeing urbanization. Let me turn, uh, now it's my turn to turn the mic over to Andy Masters. Hi everybody, my name's Andy. I am the executive director of the Columbia Housing Center and a Howard County resident. Uh, my family moved here several years ago to be honest, to be closer to family, to get free childcare. <laughs> um, what we found when we got here, though, was a community that really matched the values that I hold dear and really um, enabled my children to grow in a community that was very diverse and very integrated, where they got to meet and make friends with people that spoke different languages from them, that had different economic situations than they did, that had different um, eye color, skin color, religious backgrounds, et cetera. And so, um, you know, this this community is really important to me and, it, and, and it, it, it has provided the opportunity for my kids to grow up 
with a rich experience. Um, and we know, I believe that it's possible to do that because our community is both racially, religiously, and economically integrated, um, and one where people of all backgrounds can live, work, and play together, which was that original vision for Columbia uh, when it was first developed. Um, so HOCO by design, as Jackie mentioned and, and, and laid out, is the focus of the Housing Affordability Coalition uh, in the current time. And so um, what are we here for and how do, what are we, what are we asking of you? And that's what I'm going to talk about uh, just for a couple of minutes, but uh, a couple of quotes on the screen, just really talking about the role of people in changing power dynamics and the role of organizing those people, ensuring that change happens in a way that aligns with the desires of a community. And so for us, we know that HOCO by design is a policy document that's enacted by legislation. People that stood in front of us, asked us to vote for them, asked us to put our trust in them, and, and we have done so, or we did so for some of those folks, uh, depending on our district. So now it's our turn to hold them accountable and it's our turn to hold them accountable to the things that we believe and want to see for our community and that that is the purpose of the housing affordability coalition is to organize uh, the voices not only of the people who um, are currently affordably housed here but the folks that's that want to live here that can't afford to live here the folks that are living here that really are struggling to afford to live here and making some of those dire sacrifices in order to to raise their children and, and have their home in Howard County and you know for us it's as as uh President Obama said it's it's not just about being righteously angry it's about being organized and it's about um, you know, making sure that that vision and that voice is presented to the elected officials and the policy deciders in a way that, you know, is compelling and, and unavoidable. Um, so Dana, can you go to the next slide? So what are we looking to do in, in the current time frame? We're looking to build a large power base of people. We're looking to build a base of people that are not only uh, the organizations that represent or serve individuals, but that are individuals. Those are the voices that are going to be the most powerful. As, as uh, you know, we mentioned, many of us live here, some of us don't live here, many of us work here, some of us don't work here, but we're all invested in this community. And even when we are in organizations, our organizations are made up of individuals. And so how we bring and speak to the needs of ourselves, of our families, of our communities is really, really important. And the coalition is working to provide an organized framework to activate, uh, to educate, motivate, and activate the groups of people that we're working with and that are that care about housing affordability like we do. So currently, and I want to thank anyone and everyone who is currently also involved in any of the organizations listed on the screen, we're currently aligning and, and partnering and working and coordinating all of the INGS with uh, people acting together in Howard County, people are the Howard Progressive Project and the African American Community Roundtable to make sure that we are presenting a message and a picture that is, uh, you know, speaks to the various experiences of the people that that are that are represented in our community, and we want to make sure that we're doing that in a way that is conducive to all of the groups. And so, working together, we can do a a lot. Working together as a coalition, working together as a coalition of coalitions and organizations and individuals, we can raise awareness of the crisis that Dana spoke about. We can elevate the voices not only of the people that that uh, work here, but the people that live here, the people who are impacted by paying 50 to 60 percent of their monthly income on rent. That leaves very little for things like childcare, food, health care, transportation costs, et cetera, let alone saving to achieve that dream of home ownership that Dana talked about. We can also demand that county council addresses our housing crisis through HOCO by design and through the policies and practices that HOCO by design will dictate. So this is a really key opportunity for us to work together, for us to take what we see as our as our dream for the county and make sure that that dream for the county aligns with the policies that are being put in place and making sure that those policies and that dream includes an affordable home for everyone who wants to be here. 
Uh, Dana, next slide. So we're looking at the timeline um, and the timeline has some question marks, but the timeline has some really firm deadlines in it as well. Uh, December 1st, the draft report of HOKO by design was released. Uh, there's about a six week public comment period that ends on January 16th. That's our first opportunity to really make our voice heard uh, by going to hokobydesign.com, reading that report, um, you know, and, and most importantly, staying plugged into the Housing Affordability Coalition. Uh, the report, as Dana mentioned, is 11 chapters. It's a lot to read. Um, and we'll talk about some work that the, the coalition is doing to help make sure that that, that report is accessible to everyone. Um, the planning board, after the public comment period, will take up the, the HOKO by design. It's our first opportunity to stand face-to-face -face with the people that influence these decisions to tell our story and to make our vision as compelling as possible. Uh, following the planning board, the county council will take it up for consideration. And at that point, um, the county council has the opportunity to, uh, to accept, edit, change, and otherwise modify the the plan as it's presented. This is the critical time for us to be uh, the most active. This is when we are organizing is going to have the biggest impact is when Howard County Council is taking up and discussing, deliberating and, and uh, looking at the, the HOKO by design plan. Um, how long that will take is, is uh, unclear right now, um, but we know that the County Council at some point will adopt a general plan. We wanna make sure that the plan that's adopted reflects the needs and, and housing uh, solutions that we believe are going to uh, begin to address the crisis that Dana laid out in the beginning. All right, next. So how are we going to do that? We're going to have educational events, um, opportunities to learn more about what's happening in housing, learn more about policies and about the things that drive housing uh, crises and solutions, uh, meetings to determine the strategy. So how do we work together? How do we uh, align around this, this campaign? And then we'll be putting out action alerts. These are actionable opportunities for advocacy. This is, this is what can I do? Uh, the Housing Affordability Coalition will be putting out specific things that you can do and ways to get involved. Next slide. So some of those examples, and, and again, I want to make sure that we have plenty of time for Q&A, uh, but you can learn more about HOKO by design and submit your comments by January 6th. Um, important to that is uh, hold the afternoon of January the 5th for a Housing Affordability Coalition meeting, at which time we're really going to have conversations about uh, the key components of HOKO by design and what are some of the solutions, suggestions, and enhancements that we believe as a coalition can be made to strengthen HOKO by design and directly address the housing crisis that we see brewing. Recruit your friends, uh, follow us on social media, respond to action alerts, but most importantly, share your story. What is it that brought you to Howard County, keeps you in Howard County, keeps you from being able to live in Howard County? Share your story. It's the stories of the people that are the most powerful. So I want to end there um, and kick it over to Dana. Thanks, Andy. Nice. Uh, appreciate it. Um, uh, just while we have you here, we do want to just put an appeal out but we need help. We need help to uh, to make our case more effectively. Number one, everybody can recruit. Just find a friend who lives here, has a passion themselves for an interest or a pain point around Howard County. If you're a member of an organization that might want to get involved, your church, some other group, you can recruit. If you need help with that, um, let us know. We're happy to help you. Uh, we'll talk in a minute about some educational materials that we want to put out for ourselves, for our members to help all of us be more knowledgeable and effective advocates. Because if we can change minds one person at a time, that will help. But if we can get in front of the county council with fact-based real arguments and um, raising the, 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 the voices of people who are impacted by this, by this problem, um, we'll be making a more effective case. So if you're interested in anything related to um, housing, um, whether that's analysis, writing, development of educational materials, again, um, let us know if you're interested and we can kind of talk you through that. And we're not gonna start you with a blank piece of paper, you'll have help. Um, 
We're also looking for technical skills like video production skills, photography skills, and graphic skills. So if you know anybody like that or you yourself have those types of skill sets, please let us know. We, we can use it. And we, we do want to leave a bunch of time uh, for questions. And so uh, we're going we're gonna to go ahead and uh, open it up to, to you. I see Carol. If you would unmute, Carol. Yep. I'm just curious to know a little bit more of the history of the coalition. I, I recognize that we are in this process of the HOCO by design, but what's happened just prior to, let's say, 2020 with regard to the coalition? Hi. Uh, let me take a crack at that, Carol. And we also have uh, a couple of steering committee members on tonight, Peter and Grace, if you would like to chime in also. Let me just go back to the beginning. We started because right after the redistricting conversations in 2017, 18, <laughs> we were, so the, the, those of us sitting around a uh, table drinking coffee were just really dismayed by the uh, divisiveness the um, uh, lack of respect, lack of civility uh, that came up during those conversations. And during the redistricting conversations or process, um, we ended up there, where was a lot of conversation about the conflict between, you can't have schools and housing. Schools are more important. And, and we of course feel very strongly that number one, we need both. But students don't learn well when they're not in stable housing. And there's, you know, a whole lot of things we can talk about. So out of that grew a decision to uh, try to find like-minded people to come together. And, and, and so that's, that was our beginning. And then we just kind of monitored and took on anything that the council or the zoning board uh, was, was, you know, we're just looking at those um, requests or the pieces of legislation that were coming forward. So that's kind of our, our beginning. And, how we've evolved. Does that help? That really does. Thank you very Thanks, much. Thanks, Jackie. There you go. Uh, I don't want to say your name wrong. Is it Sharonda? Yes. Okay, go um, ahead. Um, I just wanted to know, um, since we're talking about affordable housing, um, does your coalition um, include um, affordable housing developers? Is there a small, per you know, a small percentage or a high percentage or how are they fit into this conversation? We have... Um, uh, two developers that sit on the uh, steering committee. Uh, we have a couple that are members, individuals, uh, not necessarily the company is there, but they're, uh, so yeah, uh, it's, it's their voice is heard, their voices are important because they really understand the process. They know how to um, get on one. We have one developer that is a land developer and he is just phenomenal at gathering data and analyzing and seeing what's happening. And he is so, he, you know, he makes his money by um, putting up housing, but he works very hard also and is also always including pushing for disabilities, pushing for uh, people with disabilities to have housing. So yeah, we do have developer input. It is primarily though not, um, uh, uh, it's primarily organizations that serve people that have, have housing issues and um, people like us, just normal community people that really care about uh, housing equity. But shout out to Peter Engel, who's here tonight. Yeah. He's on the steering committee. He also is the are you president or the executive director of the Howard County Housing Commission, which is our community's public housing authority. They are also a nonprofit developer of housing. A lot of these uh, uh, projects right. in downtown Columbia are, are uh, they are essentially, I guess, the general contractor or the, the facilitator of all that work, and um, uh, they're key key factor in terms of adding more affordable housing uh, to our community. And Peter is our second developer on our steering committee. Thanks. Uh, just, we have a, a question in the chat from Is it Kelly? I apologize if I get the, getting that wrong. Brand new to the housing conversation. Thank you for being here. Uh, Wondering if there's information hook up by design about how to reuse any already developed land for housing rather than developing more. And so just briefly, that is the problem in Howard County. 2% of our land is developable 
or un, or uncalled or unspoken for, I guess, could be developed. But in a lot of cases, it even is not quite suitable. It's difficult to develop. So really to add more housing in Howard County, um, it is a question of redevelopment uh, of older communities. And potentially it's a, a question of uh, someday somehow opening up more development in the West where there is not uh, public water, which is a, a barrier, one of the barriers uh, to um, uh, making more land available uh, for development. But that is that is a key issue. Is it's it's a redevelopment problem primarily as seen in the in the update to the general plan. I, let me just jump in and add Please. that I think repurposing buildings that are currently something else uh, is um, uh, certainly something that needs to be looked at also. Yeah, and I'll just add that um, for that redevelopment. We really need you to weigh in on HOCO by design because unless the zoning has changed, the only redevelopment you'll be able to do is replacing single family homes with single family homes and the like. We need a lot more areas that are allowed to have rental housing and multifamily housing and you know, condos or uh, dense townhouses and starter homes and all the rest. Uh, right now, it's very hard for anybody to take existing land and do that because the zoning doesn't allow it. Thank you, Peter. Uh, Susan, it's, do you want to go? Well, Harriet, 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 okay, Harriet, okay, sorry. Off, off go ahead, Harriet. Oh, I just, I've been involved with um, Next Door Thunder Hill, which is a community um, blog, basically. And they have them all over Columbia and all over the area. And when HOCO by Design was first introduced, there was an enormous outcry about um, they're taking away our right to have our own home, to have single family homes, all kinds of brouhaha. And um, I'm guessing that you all will tell us something about this as we move on, but there's such an emotional um, uh, reaction to any change. We saw it with the school, school, um, issue and and we saw it whenever Hoko by design was discussed and I think one of the issues that you all it would be helpful for me to know and for maybe for others is how do you diffuse hmm. that emotional reaction with facts in a short um very uh clear way that can maybe shut down some of the some of the anger and fear. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you for that because um, certainly there's a lot of just natural fear of change. Um, there are there is um, irrational fear fear of change, and there's a lot of that at play. There's irrational fear of people who don't look like me, them, the other. You know. So all of that's at play, and. Um, if you scan that list of educational topics, those were some of the early ideas that we had that really, you know, um, I think if we can flesh those out and develop those in 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 a, a digestible form, you know, concise form, they could be used to better arm all of us with talking points that could be used to calmly, civilly have a conversation that is fact-based with someone who is concerned about school capacity or environment or what happens to my home price because there's more affordable housing or what happens to the environment uh, isn't, you know, yeah, I mean, there's just dozens of, of potential objections, but there's probably 10, I would guess, that are going to come up most frequently. And those are the kinds of things that we would like to, to develop some material around, um, again, to, to provide a fact-based, calm, rational uh, framework for a conversation. Uh, some people will not be, you know, there's confirmation bias that I think a, a, a lot of us have gotten very familiar with over the last four, four to six years. Uh, so that will never be completely suppressed, but we hope that there are still enough rational people among the objectors to at least have a conversation. And a key point I would say is most of the public comment to the planners, to the county council about HOCO by design so far has been negative. 
don't build. We got enough. We're crowd, you know, our schools are overcrowded. You can't do this to us. And what we're trying to do is provide an outlet for people who believe otherwise to make their voices heard. So far, our voices have not been heard. That's why organizing and being vocal and visible is so important. This is a political process that we're entering into. It's a policy document, but it's a it's a political decision by our community as to what kind of community we're going to have. And it's going to be shaped by the people who um, can exert pressure and make demands and and make their case and uh, and bring numbers to the to the conversation. And we absolutely have to do that. If I could just jump in briefly. In the past four days, I've had four different events. You know, it's the holidays. You're getting together with a party. Two of them have been real estate related. Two of them have been one church and one um, a 55 plus group. In every single one of those events, the topic of housing has been brought up. And there's been a lot of anguish <laughs> expressed. But the thing that almost put me under the table yesterday was a lady, 50, she's probably 75 now. We were at what, Bus Boys and Poets or whatever that is. And she said to me, this is terrible housing. No one should live in houses like that. Children should not have to grow up in buildings like that. And I, I was beside myself to think that this educated person, adult, couldn't see the benefits. So the only thing I could say to her is, please tell me how the million of children in New York City grew up and made something of their lives. You're referring to someone living in a multifamily environment, like a, in Merriweather. Uh, exactly. Yeah, we, were, yeah, we were right yeah, there at, at yeah. Merriweather. Yeah, I just yeah. couldn't believe yeah. that, that opinion. Carol, I, I hate to cut you off, but we're going to end at eight o'clock mm -hmm. or sooner. We have one last poll. Thank you so much for, if you had a question, we apologize if we couldn't get to it. Please drop it um, into the chat now or email us after the fact, and we'll just try to address it as best we can in a future meeting or directly with you. Um, Dawn, if you want to just bring the last poll up, we'd like to know how we did tonight and if there's anything else that we can do in the future to make this a better experience for you. Uh, more valuable for you. So if you would not mind uh, filling that out. And um, Dawn, I don't think we're going to share the results of this one. So as soon as you're done, you want to say goodnight or just check out quietly, feel free to do that. Have a great holiday season. Be safe, be healthy. Thanks again for being here and stay tuned. Watch your inbox for um, ongoing news from us.